Writing a literature review can be a really frustrating process, it can take such a long time and it really doesn't need to be as stressful as it actually is. If you're watching this video it's probably because you want some support on writing a literature review, an excellent literature review when you're short of time. In today's video I'm going to be sharing the ways that I um, was able to save time and able to write literature reviews really quickly which meant that I was able to get a first on all the literature reviews that I wrote during university. And these tips are specifically for the process of when you're researching and trying to find the literature to be able to use in your literature review, how you read papers, how you find that like critique, those really important comparison points. And then when you're writing and editing, how you can kind of shave off a lot of hours of time um, during those processes. Now the premise, the whole premise of a literature review is that you're looking at the literature within your field, within your area of expertise, and you are searching to understand what the current state of knowledge is within your field. And so an excellent literature review is only going to be one that has looked at all of the papers, has exhausted the literature. If you've missed out papers, by nature you are going to not have a complete literature review. So my first tip that I always do is make sure that I have scoured the net to find every single paper that is important um, and that's going to have an impact on what I'm able to say in the literature review. And there's a few ways that I do that. The first is that I always have a list of keywords that I'm going to be using to search always and I write those down and I stick to them. So have 10 keywords that you use when you're doing your search. You stick to the 10 keywords that you're looking at and only use those keywords. You can use them in different orders. So instead of using the same keywords in the same order, mix them up when you're searching. Trust me, it does bring up different papers. You can also change the date range at which you're looking at. So if you're someone in the STEM field, for example, I would highly recommend looking for papers that are more recent. But if you're talking about um, the literature, you're trying to talk about the historical aspect of it and when things were first discovered or when the method was first used, of course, you need to look at the original paper, look at the first paper. So just be aware of the fact that you can um, modify the date ranges to make sure that you are actually speaking about the current state of literature. And also be aware of the difference between review papers, so like primary research papers. So when you're searching, you can see that it will say things like review, primary research paper, review, um, and you need to be aware that those are very different types of papers. So when I was looking for papers, I would always make sure that I'm looking for primary research papers initially. Review papers are also really good, um, but when you're referencing and you want to cite a paper within your literature review, avoid uh, referencing review papers because that's not the original paper and it looks like all you've done is read a review paper and then copy what they've said and that's not how you get a first. So just be aware of like the type of paper that you're reading, the date range and also making sure that you've stuck to a list of keywords. Keep searching for those keywords alone, gather all the papers that you can and then give yourself a time limit for when, for how long you're going to actually do this. When you're reading, the second tip is to always have a reading summary log is one that's called a compare and contrast framework. And this is really helpful because it helps me to summarize different authors' arguments um, and different kind of methods and results, which moves you away from just writing descriptively and actually helps you think about it from a critique aspect. So when you're reading your papers, don't just read them and just think, oh, okay, this is what they've done, oh, this is what they've done. Actually have a table that you're actively, and this is the key thing, it's the active reading, um, which is where the critique um, and where the kind of more in-depth understanding comes from, actively reading and taking the sources and taking the information, taking the methods, writing down the limitations, comparing and contrasting with what you previously read, doing that actively as you're reading saves you hours and hours of time. You don't have to go and read it for a second round um, if you already have this table set up for you when you start to read. All right, the next thing is whilst you're writing, I will always try to make sure that I don't edit. And this is something that is really difficult, but it's also something that wastes a lot of time. So as you're writing your review, you're noticing errors, you're noticing mistakes in your writing, and then you say, oh, I need to go back and correct it, and then it doesn't make sense, and it's not clear, and now you're all jumbled in your head. And my number one tip is always do not edit as you write. However, 
I have discovered PaperPal, which is actually an AI tool that provides instant suggestions for language improvements whilst you write. Actually, as you're writing, PaperPal can help you with your grammar, punctuation, spelling, style, tone. It checks the technical um, side of your writing and even gives you topic-based suggestions to help you with your chances of getting a first class or even getting published with writing a publication. And this is really cool because as you're writing, um, you can either use PaperPal for the web version or you have PaperPal for the Word version, which is a Word plugin, which I'll show you, and it's super, super cool. As you can see here, this is the PaperPal for the web version. You simply just input your um, Word file or you can load your text directly onto it. And you can see all of the suggestions that it's given me, things like punctuation, things like rephrasing because it doesn't quite make sense, um, things like what, what, what kind of articles I've used, um, things like capitalization, uh, noun, number, verb, form, even just changing the words so the choice of word is better. Um, it could all do that as you're writing. And then they have a word add-on, which is also actually my favorite um, feature of PaperPal. And it's specifically tailored for researchers and those that are doing academic writing, which is really important. The kind of words and language that you'd be using as an academic and someone that's writing academic text is very different to those that don't. And so it can accurately detect those words and any complex grammatical errors and correct it for you as you're writing. And these extensive English language recommendations can really take your literature review from being, you know, a very simple, mundane sounding bit of text to enhance it, to make it sound more clear, more academic, um, flow better, which is really important as, you know, when your examiner is reading your literature review, you want to make sure that you sound like you know what you're talking about and you want to make sure that all the reading you've done has been put in a way that um, flows and makes sense. And like I said, this will save you so much time as you don't have to think about it, you don't have to edit, you just need to write. Your job is to do your writing and PaperPal will do the checking for you. As well as the PaperPal, um, on the web real time and as well as the word version you also have uh, the manuscript version so if you're someone who is submitting a manuscript um, for publishing to a journal you can also submit your manuscript on there and it will check for any technical issues and also any language issues on in the manuscript so you have a higher chance of getting it accepted which is amazing as you can see, I am a huge fan of PaperPal. I think it's such an amazing resource. If you're someone that's writing um, a literature review, even an essay, a dissertation, a thesis, um, a manuscript, anyone that's writing any academic text, have this running on the side of your Word document. And you can ensure that you've got yourself covered at every stage of your writing. I'll leave the link for them down below um, so you can go click there and start it and try it today for free. Now, my fourth tip that I always think about when I'm writing a literature review is my structure. I always need to think about what my structure is before I actually write. The number of research papers, the number of literature reviews that I've read, that I've had to go back and say, you need to restructure this. Like, and that takes so much time to do because you need to now rearrange your thoughts, change your sentences, change the connective sentences, and it takes a lot of time. So it's really worthwhile spending a bit of time before you actually start writing, just thinking about what kind of structure you want to use for your literature review and what makes sense for your content. So there's three main types. There's chronological, there's thematic, and there's methodological. That was a mouthful. So the first is chronological, which is an order of usually time. Um, so if you're someone that's writing something um, maybe historical based, you might want to say that happened first, then that happened, then that happened, or it could be in order of something like when things are published, if you're talking about the development of a method, for example, you might want to speak about what, when a particular method was published first and what paper. Um, you might also want to speak about events, so this happened first and then that happened. So there's an order and it's usually based in time. However, the best literature reviews are not usually chronological unless it needs to be, for example, like I said, if it's historical and you need to speak about the earliest event first. But usually you want to think about it in more of a thematic sense. Thematic literature reviews are based on ideas. So this idea first, then a second idea, then a third idea, um, and then you would write about them, compare and contrast within each idea, and it all comes together to be a really beautiful um, literature review written all together. It's a little bit more authentic when you write thematically as opposed to chronologically, but like I said, it does depend on your content. And then the last one is the methodological, methodological, I can't say the word, the methodological, 
um, order. The last one is the methodological order, and this one is based on the methods that might be used, um, that the authors have used within the papers that you've just read about. Um, so this is a less common one, but definitely one that might be used if you're writing about uh, clinical reports, for example, or um, any other kind of maybe STEM type methods. And then the last thing that I never fail to do, and this is to make sure that you have linker sentences in between every single paragraph in your literature review. So I'm saying the sentence that starts your paragraphs and ends your paragraphs of every single paragraph needs to be very carefully designed. And I say designed because it makes such a difference in connecting your thoughts and helping the whole essay flow altogether. Now, when I read a literature review, I can tell straight away if it's just ideas thrown on paper um, and kind of just written out and said, right, this is the idea, that is the idea, or if it's actually a flow of thought and a discussion and even some, to some extent quite academic sounding. These paragraph starters and paragraph enders are actually signposters. Um, these are signposters are essentially something that tells the reader what's happening next or what's to come or what just happened or a bit, gives you a bit of an idea of what the author which is you is saying and how they feel about what they're writing about so signposting is a really important uh, tip that i would give you if you're aiming to get a first class and even you know what even if your content even if your literature review isn't the strongest if you have a, a flow like that where you're it's really obvious that you've taken time to make sure your ideas connect. It makes such a difference. And it actually is one of the points on every single mark scheme. It'll say something like um, clarity of discussion or something along those lines, um, where that essentially means that you are able to connect your thoughts and have some sort of flow within your ideas. There's a few questions I always ask myself when I'm writing a literature review and I always look out for when I'm reading literature reviews and I'll leave them over here for you so you can see as well um, and have those in mind when you are actually writing. Okay, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, these are five things that I do every single time when I'm trying to aim for a first, write my literature review really quickly. Um, and thank you for Paper Power for sponsoring the segment of the video where I mentioned them earlier. I, like I said, really, truly love it. I've been using it for every single document that I have. Um, so I really, truly love it go and try it today, you can try it for free and if you want to upgrade um, to the PaperPal Prime version to get unlimited suggestions, then like I said, I'll leave the link for it in my description bar down below and also pinned in the comments. Let me know if you found this video helpful and if you want to see something similar like this, then don't forget to press the subscribe button and don't forget to like this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.